Hey SmartSuite community, my name is Artem, I'm a product manager here at SmartSuite. And in this video, I want to walk you through the recent updates to the document designer feature, including the new image and link elements, updates to address and files and images fields, and of course, the new anchoring position. So let's go. If you're new to SmartSuite, a document designer is a tool that allows you to create custom PDF templates and then use those templates to print your records. Think of invoices, sales orders, purchase orders, quotes, anything. In order to access the document designer, we'll need to go to the tables menu right here. And as you can see, I have already set up a nice template so I could walk you through all the new features. And let's start with the top element up here, which is an image element. The setup is quite simple. All you have to do is provide a URL and a PDF template will display an image located on that URL. And this can be anything, your company logo, any marketing material, things that will help to spice up the look and feel of your PDF. And yes, in the future, we will be adding the ability to upload the images from a local drive. Now, moving on to the next feature, which is a link element. See, if I click here on the SmartSuite LLC, down in the properties section, we will see the content and the URL. So the content just holds the text that will be displayed on the PDF, while the URL allows you to enter a link so that when someone clicks on the text, they will be taken to the specified URL. Now let's take a look at the table that I have down below. This is a link tracker that actually displays a list of products that I'm offering to my customer as a part of this quote. And as I'm jumping from quote to quote, you can see how the number of products offered will change depending on the quote. But pay attention to the shipping cost and the total fields, how they get stick to the bottom of this table and they react to the change of quantity of the products. How do we do that? Well, that's the anchoring position that has been introduced with the latest release. So if we pick the shipping cost label and we check the position setting, you will see that we have a new option called anchored. And in order to set it up, we have to do two steps. First, we need to select a field that will act as an anchor for the current field. So in this case, we are working with the shipping cost and we want it to be stuck with the linked record field. So this is exactly what we have selected here. Quote lines is a linked record field. And also in the dropdown setting here, you will see that all the, all the elements on the page are listed top to bottom, fields, images, other elements, and you also have the X and Y position. So that if you happen to have two labels and you are not sure which one is which, you can tell that, okay, if this one is 60 by X and 160 by Y, you can identify the one you need to anchor to. And then once we define the anchor, we have an option to also define the distance from it. Why is it important? If we put the distance to zero, pay attention that it leaves no margin and it doesn't look good. So in most cases, you will need to give it some air to breathe. Now, if we move one line down, then the total label and the total field will have to be anchored to the field that sits above them. So we are building a chain of anchors. And then if we move down here, then the line will be anchored to the total, the deliver to will be anchored to the line and so on. And if we build it correctly, then all the fields that are located below the linked record will be moving either up or down, depending on the height of the linked record field. So this is a very powerful uh, feature. You need to spend some time to set it up, but if done correctly, that can guarantee that your PDFs will always look nicely formatted, regardless of the content that they display. And finally, let's run through the updates to the address and the files and images fields, starting with the address. You can clearly see that it's now possible to visualize the map right on the PDF. And to do so, all you have to do is drop the address field on the canvas 
then go to the settings and put the setting into the map mode. The map is not clickable, however, it can provide some nice visual help to whoever needs to get to their destination. And we have finally got to the updates made to the files and images field. So if we go to the setting, you will notice a bunch of new controls here. First of all, we'll let you pick whether you want to display the first image or all images, because both use cases are valid and can be useful. So if I click to change the first image, it will take the entire space. If I say all images, it will build a container and it will try to fit as many images as it can. Now for all images, we have an extra setting here called sizing, where you can pick from the three options, square thumbnails, which I'm, follow, which I'm showing you right now. Then you can switch to fixed height and you can see all three of them will be of the same height, or you can use the fixed width. Same thing, fixed width, but now the height differs. Well, depending on the type of media you're using, you may pick the option that suits your needs. In this case, I will be using the square thumbnails, and I can also manipulate the image size. So I can make those squares bigger or smaller, depending on my needs. And additionally, we can specify the padding, like if you want to have those images displayed closer to each other or give them a little bit more room, it's up to you. Um, and you can see in this case of my bookstore, I was using the files and images field just to provide some nice um, images of this imaginary shop so that the customer who I'm sending this quote to could, you know, get to know me a little bit better and hopefully accept the quote. Okay, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me, shoot me an email or hit me on LinkedIn. My contacts are displayed above. Thank you.